This week on TGC News, a Turkish delight, a good guy saves a cop, and the downward spiral of Remington. Sharps Brothers offers some of the most unique and well-built AR-15 and AR-10 receivers around, with models like the Warthog, the Jack, the Hellbreaker, or even the classic-looking Mean Streak. You'll be sure to find something to fit your build. To learn more about these and all of the other products that they make, head over to sharpsbros.com. Welcome back to TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get cracking, I have an announcement. This is going to be difficult for me to say, but uh, <laughs> screw it, I'm kidding, this is totally awesome. The TGC Q&A panel at NRA annual meeting is happening. Last year was the first time that anything like this had ever been done, and we learned an enormous amount, and this year, the freaking NRA is getting behind the event and letting us have it right in the convention center. This will be happening on April 29th at 1 p.m. I'm still waiting for hard confirmation on which room. It will most likely be on the third floor with an awesome theater-style setup for you guys, but this will be epic. Last year, we gave away an absolute mountain of stuff, and this year, it's only going to be better. There's even going to be a bunch of guns given away this year. Yep, you do not want to miss this. But hey, if you can't be there in person, we will be live streaming this event all over Facebook, so do not fret. We're also going to be taking questions from the audience in the room as well as the live stream audience. Panelists include myself, Adam Kraut, Eric and Chad from IV8888, Tim from Military Arms Channel, 22 Plinkster, Mr. Guns and Gear, We Like Shooting, Jeremy from T-Tag, and Whitey from 4 Guys Guns. Quick note, Eric and Chad did mention this in their video the other day about their appearances and said something about tickets. That was a slight miscommunication between us on mostly my part. You guys do not need tickets to get into the door. You just show up, ask us absolutely anything, and potentially win some epic prizes. Again, that is Saturday, April 29th at 1 p.m. at the NRA annual meeting in Atlanta. Now, this week's first story is about a Turkish gun. More specifically, the shotguns made by Typhoon Defense Industries. <laughs> These names, you guys, amazing. You know, I've seen a bunch of variations on 12-gauge semi-autos, and for some odd reason, most of them tend to come out of Turkey. I don't know why the Turkish people love producing so many variations of guns. There must be, like, shotgun wads in the water or something. The long and short of this is that it is an AR-15-style box magazine fed semi-auto 12 gauge with some of the coolest styling that I've seen since the Origin 12 from Fostech. Now, there's no word on whether these will actually make it to the States because quite honestly, I couldn't find anything that was in English besides some vague Facebook posts. There is a video on the Typhoon YouTube channel showing someone test firing a bunch of rounds and the recoil, unlike most Turkish shotguns, doesn't look too bad. They make a lot, but they don't make them refined, the Turks. The, <laughs> those shotguns can kick. Now, here's the thing. I had previously seen a gun called the Akdal MKA 1919, a very similar concept of a box-fed 12-gauge. I would be shocked if this was not the same damn gun with a new logo and some different furniture. It looks very, very similar. Either way, it's still cool looking, and with no more information than that, I think all we can do is hope that it makes it here and is actually affordable. What do you guys think of shotguns like this? Would you grab this to, like, defend your home, or would you rather have something like a Sega or an Origin 12? And in the death spiral of Remington news, last week we talked about the Big R laying off over 120 people in their Ilian, New York facility. If you haven't seen that, there's a link somewhere on the screen or in the description, and you can go watch that right now. They've been hurting. Dealing with the normalization of the gun industry and the gigantic lawsuit against them regarding their Model 700 rifles firing without having the trigger pulled. They are not having a good time. A federal judge has actually just approved a very big settlement with that particular case where Remington would just have to attempt to fix over 7 million rifles. 
Now, this requires people to actually send them in, so I doubt that will happen with all of those, but it is still big. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what the other option may have been. I guess something monetary, but still, this is very significant for Remington. And on top of that, they just fired 34 more people, including directors of Remington Defense, their product management, and senior VP of product development among others. It's almost a little sad to see the company shrinking like this, but as they said in a statement, they are not immune to the changing market. But here's what stood out to me. They're starting to ax the right people. The executives of the company have been running it into the ground with poor decisions on products, and this shows us that they might finally be realizing that they have to change to survive. I think most of us don't really want to see companies like Remington or Colt fail. We want them to get their butts kicked to the point where they shape up. And now for our good guy with a gun story for this week. It was November 14th of 2016 in Lee County, Florida. Officers were responding to a crash, and one of the officers, a sheriff's deputy, noticed a man driving by recklessly and decided to get in the car and give chase. It was soon after that that the deputy, Dean Bardis, was overcome by the suspect, and getting beaten into the ground. It was kind of a weird altercation, but this is really where this story picks up. There's a cell phone video kind of depicting the scene, and it did not look good for the officer. That was until Ashad Russell decided to be a good Samaritan. He walked up with his gun drawn, verbally warned the suspect, and when all options were exhausted, he shot the man beating the officer and saved the cop's life. The suspect later died as a result of being shot in the shoulder and neck area. Now, as you and I both know, this type of thing was bound to go to court, but now, just the other day, Russell has been cleared of any wrongdoing in this case. Justice has prevailed. With all of the video evidence, it was pretty clear what actually happened in this case, and I think this goes to show you that good guys do win sometimes. I've been asking you guys for opinions on all of these good guy with a gun stories, and it seems you would all agree that this guy did the right thing. Now, be sure to stick around until after the break for this week's Friendly Fire. The drive-by kit from RE Factor Tactical offers multi-mission capability for operating operationally from your vehicle. Whether it's to calm down your never-ending road rage, shut your stupid kids up, or actually using it properly, you decide the mission and load it up your way. Able to be detached with a quick pull of a tab, you can even take it with you for use outside the vehicle. Available in black, tan, and multicam, this mini kit is a great add-on to anyone's gear list. To get 10% off your entire order, click the link in the description to head over to refactortactical.com and use the code TGC10. This week's Friendly Fire question is from Nate McCord on the TGC Facebook page, and he asks, what is the most you would pay for a single firearm? That's a fun question, right? The answer to that is a little bit more complex, though. If I had the money, I wouldn't mind paying the six digits for a minigun, or even the five digits for most machine guns. But in the realm of normal stuff, the most I've ever paid for a gun that I currently own is around $4,000 for my Lever Action 500 Magnum. That gun is extremely special to me, and I worked hard to earn that cash. So that makes it kind of worth more to me. And before somebody gets butt hurt and says, oh, that's because you do stuff on TGC. I bought that gun when I was working in a gun store back in 2013, making $11 an hour. Now, my friendly fire question to you guys this week is, do you keep bulk ammo on hand or do you just go to the store and buy ammo before you go out to the range? I'm curious to see if you guys are like me and stack it deep whenever possible. Let me know down in the comments. And if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can head over to to theguncollective.com, go to the Friendly Fire page, and send me your questions. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. If you haven't yet, get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.